Good afternoon. Uh, it's my honor, first of all, to be here and to have some kind of uh, discussion with you regarding uh, Korea's ODE, focusing on uh, social and economic development of Korean experience last uh, uh, six decades. Before I start, I'd like to give my special uh, thanks to Dr. Oh Jung Hoon, Professor Oh Jung Hoon, who invited me cordially to uh, this very, very important uh, lectures today. And I'm very happy to be with you uh, because 20, 30 years ago I am here uh, in this university as a master degree in public administration. And uh, at that time I was very uh, younger and then always eager to know the social science at the time. And then I'm very fortunate to have a very good professor at the time to teach me uh, the methodology of social science. With this kind of uh, foundation, I uh, went to state to study my further study uh, in the political science. Uh, and uh, back to Korea in 1991, I joined COICA when Koika was founded. Maybe you know Koika or not. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, Koika is a uh, Korea International Cooperation Agency implementing uh, grants and technical cooperation for developing uh, countries. It was almost 24 years uh, since the foundation of the Koika and then uh, I joined Koika at the time, and then right now I'm uh, vice president of Koika, and uh, I'm very happy to be with you to talk about ODE and Korean human experience uh, about you. Almost 30 or 40 minutes we will uh, talk about uh, my lectures, and then uh, question and answers session will be followed by that. If you have any questions in your mind, please feel free to raise your hand and uh, I'm ready to uh, respond to your questions about that. So, first of all, yeah. Uh, okay, let's start. <laughs> there are many parts to talk about you with a very short of time, so at the speed of my thing is uh, a little fast than you expected. Please, uh, you know, understand my things. Uh, the seven uh, session which I like to talk about to you. Briefly, I will explain to you our Korea's OD. OD means Official Development Assistance. In other words, foreign aid. But generally speaking. Instead of a foreign aid, we use uh, ODA, Official Development Assistance. Korea's brief system and policy, followed by COICA, my agency at the grants. Very, very short introduction will be followed by that. And I would like to, this is my highlight of my lectures, development experience from three perspectives, capacity development, and economic development and the social development. The three perspectives I'd like to analyze uh, our experience from that point of view. And how to link with COICA's activity with this kind of three development perspective of that. Finally, I will touch uh, how to enhance aid effectiveness, which is main uh, topics of international uh, global villages, especially UN, focused on aid effectiveness rather than aid quantity or whatever. These are uh, seven uh, topics you would like to uh, focus on that. So I will ODA system first. ODA, maybe uh, I talk to you official development assistance, right? Official development assistance, in other words, ODA or ODA. Uh, pronounce ODA or ODA or Official Development System like this way. Uh, Korea's ODA system, as you see in the diagram, divided into bilateral and multilateral. Bilateral 
I mean, this is a direct assistance from A countries to B countries, from Korea to Vietnam, from Korea to Rwanda, from Korea to other developing countries. This is, we can say, bilateral. Meanwhile, multilateral aid means not directly to uh, developing countries, but through international organization, World Bank, UNDP, or WFP, we can say multilateral aid. Bilateral aid subdivided into grants and loans. Grants is consist of uh, grant aid and technical cooperation, which my agency, COICA, is implementing right now. And we are under the umbrella of Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And uh, loans is also, you can see, EDCF loans, Economic Development Cooperation Fund. Uh, right now, it was implemented by Export Import Bank, Action Bank of Korea. Uh, the policy is generally uh, designed by Ministry of Strategy and Finance. On the other hand, multilateral aid also subdivided into contribution to international oil contribution. This is directly dealt by Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. And another type of uh, multilateral aid is a subscription. Subscription. This is to uh, international financial facility, for example, World Bank, IMF, Asian Development Bank, Africa Development Bank, IDB, whatever. This is, we can call it subscription. It is implemented by Ministry of Australian and Finance. This is very simple. Uh, if you look at the other uh, advanced countries, uh, organized structures, this is very similar to uh, Korea, but the main feature of uh, other, uh, other advanced uh, donor uh, countries is that almost 95% of uh, ODA is uh, grants, bilateral, and, uh, uh, oh, uh, sorry, 70% of bilateral and 30% multilateral. And uh, among grants and loans, 90%, 95% of grants and loans are just 5%. So general trend is uh, grants and technical cooperation is the main tools of uh, uh, ODA. So, uh, but in case of Korea, bilateral and multilateral is very similar to other advanced countries, 70 bilateral and 30% multilateral. On the other hand, grants and loans is concerned is different. Grants is right now is uh, 53% and the loans are 47%, something like that. So our government decided to up, increase grants up to 60% by uh, next year. So we hope that uh, more and more grants will be given to our ODA programs. And why grant is uh, preferable to loans? You will maybe uh, a question to me, but I will respond to you later. It is very interesting that the Korean National Assembly passed a law, so-called ODA law, in 2010, stipulating five main goals of ODA in Korea. First, poverty reduction. That is a general ODA programs. Every country has a poverty reduction is their main goal. And Korea is the same. Second, enhance human rights of women and children and realize gender equality, gender empowerment, something like that. Third, sustainable development and the humanitarianism is welcomed. There are many issues, controversial issues surrounding ODA. Some countries focused on very economic interest motivations behind the scene. But on the other hand, in case of Scandinavian countries, they are focused on very humanitarian perspective. But some countries focused on quite political driven motivations behind them. Each country has different motivations. But in case of Korea, Generally speaking, sustainable development and humanitarianism is welcome. 
enforce economic cooperation with the partner countries, promote. That is economic motivations also at the same time. And finally, peace and prosperity of international communities are stipulated in our ODA programs. These are five main goal or direction or vision objectives of Korea's ODA programs. What is principle to visualize this kind of objective? Three. The first is combine needs of partner countries and then the accumulated experience of a Korea. That is very true. We have very good experience in escaping vicious circle of the poverty in the last five decades. Therefore, we would like to share that kind of experience with the developing countries like this way. Second, maximize and the effectiveness by integrated approaches. Integrate, I mean, there are so many eight types. Technical cooperation, grants and loans, whatever. It is picture of volunteers. There are so many programs who are public-private partners. So in order to make more effectiveness, we have to integrate more chemistry among many types of it, which can induce aid effectiveness. The third principle is deliver aid sincerely with the two hands. Maybe some of you are foreign students, but you do not know what is the meaning of two hands in Korea. S to provide something with two hands means to respect. This is our old tradition and culture. So we do not want to impose Korean experience to other developing countries. We would like to share. So I prefer share rather than transfer. Share our experience with uh, other countries, respecting their culture, respecting their tradition, respecting their human rights. These are very important part of it. They live sincerely with two hands. These are three main principles of Korea's ODI. Look at the change of uh, statistics. In 2000, our ODI volume was 210 million US dollars. But last year, uh, two years ago, last year was not yet. It was uh, formulated in the, in the end of this year. But two years ago, almost 1.6 billion. That is the first time for Korea to increase more than 1 billion. So eight times increase last 10 years or something like that. This shows strong commitment of Korean government toward developing countries to tackle the poverty in the world. Asia, 65%, Africa, 16%, Latin America, 7%, and others international organization, whatever, is others like this way. Asia is our main partners. Generally speaking, EU, Europe has focused on Africa. United States focused on Latin America, something like that, or Asia Pacific or whatever. And Australia focused on Pacific countries, PG, Samoa, uh, PNG or something like that, because they are their background, backyard of it. So it is necessary or natural for Korea to focus on Asia first. But it does not mean that we ignore the poverty in Africa and other countries. Our government decided to triple our ODA to Africa by 2015, next year. So when you look at the COICA statistics toward Africa, 2008, just 8%. But last year, it was almost 20%. This shows ODA, ODA in Korea generally. In Koika specifically, we focused on 20, almost 20 more, 20 plus percent to Africa. 
We have right now 44 overseas offices in the world, Koika. Among them, Africa is 14 overseas offices, number one. More than Asia. What it means? We focused on Africa for that. My agency's program, vision making a better world together. Focused on together, not alone. It's very important, not alone. Koika, with a partnership with our local NGOs, local mass media, local academia, universities. On the other, we also have focused on partnership with the international organization UN, World Bank, as well as advanced countries, USAID in the US, DFID in the United Kingdoms, AFD in France, GIZ in uh, Germany, JICA in Japan, OSAID in Australia. There are so many aid agencies there. We would like to combine their comparative advantage with Korea's together to tackle poverty is the main goal of that. So our vision three is same to our Korea's ODA law. Elevation of the poverty, achieve MDGs. What is MDGs? Millennium Development Goals of partner countries and uh, assist the sustainable social economic development. I like the words sustainability. That is the word which I always emphasize to our staff. The aid effectiveness is really rely on sustainability, not just a one-time delivery. So sustainability is the most important words which I describe to everyone to appreciate why sustainability is important. Without the sustainability, I think it is not effective. I promote human humanitarian assistance and human security or something like that. Mainstream selection of focus, what it means. Our OD volume is quite small compared with other advanced countries. Therefore, we have no choice but to focus on some area, some sector, which we believe have a good result. Look at Rwanda, very small country in east part of the Africa. But we focused over many types of uh, uh, our type to Rwanda. Why? Rwanda is very good countries. They are good governance is there. Their president of uh, Rwanda, Mr. Kagame, is a pretty good vision. And uh, no corruption at all. Maybe you are uh, very strange to hear that uh, there's no corruption in Africa, but that is true. If you go to Rwanda, Rwanda, maybe you are thinking, reminds of genocide of Rwanda in 1984, but that kind of memory was gone. Mr. Kagami was also a minority, Tutsi race of that ethnic, ethnic groups, but he overcome every kind of thing. Right now, he become the president of Kagami, of Rwanda, have very good vision of it. And we, Korea, would like to have some kind of support to implement his vision. And then to have some kind of hope to Africa, especially in Rwanda, spread to other countries, Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Mozambique, Ethiopia, whatever. So, we have no choice from the selection and the focus is our main strategies and share our experience, as I told you, and respect their needs and ownership of paternity. Respect local ownership. As I told you many times, how important local ownership. When we drive the car, who is driver, who is staff? In the past, the advanced technocrats, advanced donor was in the seat of a driver. Developing country is just, you know, sit behind, beside the drivers, which leads to totally failed aid. Therefore, right now, the, the 
the you know position has changed. Donor countries in a sporting groups, and uh, developed countries in driver set. That is so called local ownership. Respecting the, it's their hand, their will. To have something, not the donor's will. So it is very important promoting participation of Korean civil society. As I told you, our NGOs, local NGOs, academias. There are many stakeholders right now involved in this process. It's very welcomed. I'm very happy to have more and more uh, groups would like to join uh, activities together. Quicker program sector, education, health, energy industry, rural development, IT, governance is uh, changed. Asia, Africa, Latin America, Middle East, East Europe, and CIS. East Europe and CIS is no more at all because they already graduate the, the recipient of uh, uh, ODA programs. Therefore, uh, it's almost East Europe and Shia was, was always gone, especially uh, inc excluding Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan is our still our uh, you know main partners. Let me turn to Korean experience. Uh, some of you, you know the Korean students know uh, the Korean history about that, but I don't know what the other foreign uh, students think about it. Uh, last uh, six decades, very simplified three stages in our economic and social development. The first stage, 19, until 1960, our main, uh, you know, Korea was uh, least developed, con developed countries, very poor countries over there. After the Korean War, everything was destroyed. Infrastructure was destroyed. Millions of people were killed. Still, South and North Korea was divided into that. Uh, our GDP was, uh, per capita was uh, 67 uh, US dollars. This is a very low compared with the uh, as of today. And received a huge amount of OD from all of the countries, especially from the United States and the EU and the UN, which is, I think, a basis for our economic and social development. Almost 12.7 uh, billion US dollars. Converting into current uh, prices, I think, 60 billion US dollars. So uh, you imagine how much we rely on ODA in 1960, 70, or something like that. But in 1960, later, we have a very strong president, and he has strong leaderships. And uh, maybe you hear five-year economic development plan, uh, five times economic development plan, uh, which play an important role in uh, Korean history. And also at the same time, 1980s, we have uh, uh, overcome democratic struggle in 1980, and then to have political development as well. As of today, Korea become the donor countries, and also OECD DAC members about that. GDP was sold almost like this way, and then our uh, GDP per capita corresponding to more than uh, 23,000 uh, US dollars, something like that, compared with uh, 67 in 1953 to 23,000 US dollars in as of today, which shows how fast Korean economic development was over there. As of today, Korea become donor uh, countries of that. Uh, let's turn to different experience from three perspectives, capacity development, economic development, and social development. 
Korean drone started with uh, capacity development. World Bank analyzed the secret of Korean economic social development from three perspectives. The first, strong leadership. Second, very effective public administration. Third, very efficient human capacity. These are three main factors to describe the secret of Korean economic development. One of the things is Korean development is capacity development, capacity building. We have abundant human resources. However, 1960s, our government has high enrollment rate in primary education, secondary and the third tertiary educations focused on capacity building. And your father and mother generation, I'm also, is one of the beneficiary of Korean government's education policies. Two, and then our father and mother generation sacrificed their welfare to focus on the money and everything for their offspring education. So I am one of them, and I'm very happy uh, to be with that. And we have very skilled labor forces were reared by our vocational training center, secondary and tertiary economic growth like this way. State-led development, five-year development plan, which I mentioned just before, and also foreign aid aligned with our national priorities. There is a reason why we would like to focus on our developing partners' priority area. We do not want to driven, drive our ODA from political and economic perspective. I don't want. Maybe some of them are too focused on that, but I don't want. First of all, very humanitarian, internet standard focus. And then followed by economic and social development will be followed by that. So I do not want our ODA to be driven by that. And also, our assistance should be aligned with their priority. When the United States, USAID, provide enormous amount of ODA to Korea in 1960-70, they try to teach Korea to do something to this way, but we said, no, that is not our priority. Please, please listen to our uh, voices like this way. Fortunately, USAID listened to our uh, voices very carefully and then aligned to our uh, priority area too. So we are very uh, fortunate to have cooperation with USAID at that time. Sometimes aid agencies force the developed countries to do something based on the priority of not, donor, not, not developing countries, but donors' perspective. This is not good at all. This is our experience. Therefore, I would like to share with, a, with this kind of thing with the other partners and endeavor to prevent corruption. It is not easy, especially corruption is concerned. This is uh, sometimes linked with uh, their domestic policies, whatever. So we are very sensitive, skillful to do something, this kind of thing toward other countries like this way. Capacity development with the institution building, which are able to develop their own ability to cope with different tasks. For example, when COICA was founded in 1991, we invited many public officials, technicians, students from all over the world to Korea. Maybe right now, the, the GIS is in Korea University also have a COICA student here. You may encounter COICA's programs or not. Uh, these are one of them. Koika right now has uh, provided many, many seminars, curriculums, 
which covers agriculture, computer, IT, or economic development. There are so many courses are uh, open every year. Almost we invited 8,000 public officials and technicians from all over the world to Korea to share our experience. Last 20 years, almost 80,000 public officials were invited to Korea to share our experience. One of them became Prime Minister. Almost more than 100 invited here to back to their countries become minister or vice minister. There are so many, you know, high-level bureaucrats came to Korea to share, to understand what Korea is all about, and then back to their countries to would like to implement the good experience with uh, uh, their countries as well. Cambodia training programs. There are, for example, Cambodia, we have many 2,000, I don't know, 2 or 2.5 thousand public officials invited from Cambodia. If you have a chance to visit Cambodia officials, almost half of their public officials have a chance to visit Korea uh, to share our experience. In the past, we have uh, many programs, what sanitation, IT, multipurpose dam, construction, rural development, international relations. So this covers national social development, economic development, rural development. There are so many courses which Cambodian officials have implemented and back to their countries. And also, Lao Republic's stake exchange. Uh, in 2000, from 2007-2010, we opened Lao Stock Exchange Systems training program. This is a solely for Lao Republics. And uh, a bank of Lao PDL, Minister of Finance, Stock Market Stable Committees, was invited in Korea Security Depository. And uh, right now, Lao, Lao government is planning to establish Lao Stock Exchange. This is the main part of uh, capitalistic oriented, right? Systems like this way, Laos stock exchanges like this way. So all of them, most of them came to Korea to share experience to back to their countries. Uh, these are the main feature of capacity development, how we invited public officials all over the world to Korea to share and uh, to do that. Economic development. Economic development is, I think, main engine of poverty reduction. Without economic development, this is based, based on sand. It's groundless. This is very fragile. Therefore, economic development is, I think, a precondition to achieve social development over there. But economic development is uh, there are many stage from agricultural rural development to IT. This is high tech over there. So uh, we would like to have uh, many courses in line with their economic stage. Premier stage, we focused on rural development or something like that. In case of uh, uh, very advanced developed countries, we focused on IT or I whatever, based on their uh, economic uh, status, we focused on their uh, status like this way. Agricultural productivity, the main uh, primary stage of that. For example, Vietnam Semal Undong pilot project was implemented by Koika in as of rural development series. It, in 2006, for example, Two villages and uh, uh, 300,000 project was uh, spread to right now, uh, 650 villages over there. And 2,000 every rural development project was combined as a Langmoy movement. This is a new village movement is spread to Africa. Ah, sorry, in Vietnam. As of today, we have very good programs of rural development. Someone says 
positive way, others say a negative way. There are very controversial arguments regarding Semal Wundong like this way. But to my understanding, when I visited the many Asian countries, African countries, I feel that uh, if our program might be adjusted local conditions, I think there's many room for Korean rural development programs to be there. So a very good result of that. In case of Asia, it was proved, evaluated, have very good result. No doubt about it. But in Africa, in Latin America, let's see what is the result of this one. If we have good result from that, we have a very good model of it, and then uh, to to share our experience with them. And also, we have, you know, to implement this kind of good program, Semamundo programs, we have right now uh, combined our program with the UN. So in Tanzania and Uganda, we have so-called Korea Millennium Village, Millennium Village projects uh, to achieve in Millennium Development Goal in Sub-Sahara -Sub Africa, eight billion, eight million US dollars for that. This picture shows uh, the signing ceremony with the many, uh, you know, uh, head of uh, organization, Mr. Ban Ki Moon. You, you are familiar with him, of course. And uh, just uh, uh, left the former president of Koika. And uh, the right. Mr. Kim Ganyong, this is uh, the, the governor of Gyeongsangbuk province. They are working very hard to implement the Semar Undong to Africa as of today. And uh, far right, you can see Jeffrey Sachs. He is a well-known professor of development right now in Columbia University. And others, Mr. Do Young Shim. A former parliamentary members, right now is the head of a staff and others. This is a signing ceremony and it is implementing right now. Maybe next year we can see the result of it. I hope. We have good result. I hope. So that we can provide more and more result oriented projects to other countries of that. IT projects, this is uh, the highest level of the projects because it is needs skillful labor forces and then infrastructure all of that. And one of the uh, case study of, uh, there are so many cases of it, IT projects. But I'd like to share with you uh, one or two example of Koika's IT programs, especially in Bangladesh, Korea IT training center program. This is IT projects Bangladesh, and uh, uh, is uh, oh, it's always gone. But there are so many projects is going on, especially in vocational training programs over there. Vocation training program, you know how to have a skill from very primary to very skilled programs, horticultures, beautician. This is very simple techniques, but it is very important for African woman to earn the money. With this kind of money, she can bring their children to school which is sustainable, very important for their families to do that. Even though this is very simple techni techniques of that. But anyhow, vocational training is very important. One of them is IT. IT is one of vocational training programs. IT, computers, and uh, for example, beauticians, horticultures. There are so many kinds of uh, vocational training programs. So we would like to focus on IT or vocational training programs. Aid for trade is also economic development, one part of it. Aid is not a panacea. Panacea, I mean, 
the drug or the medicine to solve everything we can see. Manbyeong Tongchiak, we can in Korea, we saw that. Aid should be seed money. It, not, it should not be the role of the panacea. Why aid is not effective, failed in Africa? Because it was, they are addicted to aid. So we don't want Africa peoples to be addicted by aid. Aid should be the role of seed monies. And more and more important thing is their trade capacity buildings. Aid should be for support of their trade promotions like this way. So aid for trade concept is development with this kind of context. Aid should be seed money or support role for aid promotions, uh, trade promotions like this way. So aid for trade is very important concept or issues right now in international community with the institution buildings and uh, we would like to deliver export oriented industrialization and export promotion policies to other countries because we have very good programs about it even though we are not ultimately good programs at all. We have some pros as well but we would like to share not only our positive aspect of it, but negative aspect of it. How to recover from IMF bailout in 19, 2000, 1997, for example. We have also tried and errors here. So we'd like to share not only positive, but also negative thing together. So that different countries can understand what, you know, Korea involved in this process to overcome the obstacles and the many limitations about it. Aid for Trade in Cambodia, for example, we invited many officials from Cambodia uh, to here uh, to have capacity building in trade, goods and services in Cambodia. And also how to their smooth soft landing in WTO uh, systems like this way. So we'd like to share this one. Finally, evaluation workshop is uh, in Cambodia to share our experience. We provided the report, final report to Cambodian peoples, Cambodian public officials, so that this is our main goals, like this way. This is a A for trade, economic development, like this way. Okay, let's turn to social development. Time is so limited, so I'd like to sometimes skip, but you understand what it means. Social development. This is a of course, link with economic development. Economic development, I told you that this is the basis for social development. So we have a very good program in social development, the family planning projects, like this way. This is so successful to such an extent that we are right now afraid of future labor force shortages, like this way in Korea. 1960s, one woman has generally six children. As of today, this is a too low in the world, 1.2 children in 2012. How successful, <laughs> how successful the family program was all about. But right now, government has changed their policies to have more children, to have more incentive to have more labor forces in the future, so like this way. And also, Koika, we also have many uh, primary health care projects, maternal health, health, family health planning project in all over the world. This is, these are one of quite adventurous side of uh, projects of uh, Koika program, family programs and clinic programs, not big hospital but very small, but very effective clinics all over the world. Quick health project in Peru. In Peru, we have uh, six hospital projects, all of them, working quite well. And then many uh, children and women are access to our 
uh, hospital facilities like this way. And uh, it's a pretty good uh, impact on, especially in uh, minorities, women, children, and uh, like this way. And social development, the vocational training programs. As I told you, this is a very important part of it to provide skill, technicians for their living. It is basis for uh, their life as well. We have many, many good projects, especially in uh, vocational training programs, job creation, employment, income growth, industrialization as well. And uh, uh, almost is 100 projects was uh, done in the last 20 years in all over the world. In Vietnam, we have Vietnam Industrial Technology Schools over there, which is a very good school in Vietnam. And uh, our volunteers dispatch there to play the role of teachers over there. And uh, it's working quite well. And very good labor forces, very skilled, qualitative workforces was uh, bring about in this school. Education is also another area of social development. We have very good experience in primary, a secondary education experience like this way. And one of the examples is Lao textbook supply projects from 2007 to 2009, amounting 3 million US dollars. You look at this picture, Laos is still very poor countries, do not have any good textbook at all. Considering this kind of thing, we think it is good for them to provide a new textbook for old student, primary student, secondary student, and tertiary student as well. And these are the picture which primary school students was very happy to receive the first year new textbook. If you look back page of the textbook, you can see the two national flag, one Lao, another Republic of Korea. So with just three million US dollars, it has really everlasting impact on the education of the Lao Republic of that. And uh, these are uh, one example, COICAS program to provide primary and secondary uh, education program. Okay, let's turn to final uh, things for AD effectiveness. In 2000, from 2000, international community focused on more aid and better aid. More aid, you understand that? more and more ODA programs, which Jeffrey Sachs argued very strongly. In order to implement ODA program, Millennium Development Goal programs, we need money. So, which we can call big push programs, big push, big push, by Jeffrey Sachs and other colleagues. On the other end, Mr. Stiglitz and then William Easterly, Mr. Chang ha -jun, for example, they are very criticizing the impact of Jeffrey Sachs big push series. It is not enough to have money. We need more skilled, manageable OD programs focused on aid effectiveness. So more aid and better aid means aid effectiveness. These are slogans of 21st century in international community to focus on more aid and better aid. Right now, rather than more aid, to focus on better aid. So, aid effectiveness is the highlighted as of today to think about how to secure aid effectiveness. So, right now, let's give you some hints of COICA and Korean governments uh, to the way to secure aid effectiveness like this way. Three words. 
ownership, which I like focus many times, how important it is. Second, managing for result. Not into input basis, but output basis. Show me the result. ODA is 100% tax by the people. So in case of COICA, we have to show, demonstrate the impact of their tax monies toward them. This is your money. This is the result of it. Therefore, we have to show them managing for result is the concept which introduced in 2000 as well. And partnership. Making better world together is the motto of COICA. Why I told you, reiterated, emphasize partnership. Not alone, partnership. Because each donor has their different comparative advantage. By doing integration of each comparative advantage, it is more and more result, managing poor result. This is so-called the stage of complementality, complement together. So, program aid. Program aid is quite overall programs. Generally speaking, there are two types of it, program aid and project aid. Project aid is to build a hospital, for example, in one, some area. To have a vocational training center in area. You can say this is a project aid. Program aid is overall comprehensive type of it. For example, in Cambodia, they have their own vocational training policies. So in line with their Cambodia's counterparts, vocational training policies, COICA is integrating our project aid with their comprehensive policy together. This is, we can say, program aid. Program aid is a combination of a total project aid. How, in a logical way, to secure aid effectiveness, rather than very specific project aid, more focused on program aid. Program aid in, you know, guarantees good results because this is a so-called to see the forest rather than to see trees. You understand that? Rather than to see the each trees, to see the overall forest together. This is program aid. So right now, Inter community focused on program aid rather than project aid. COICA is one of them. For example, vocation training program like this way. Each country has their vocation training policies, human resources training programs like this way. So COICA is in line with their policies. We focused on training facility expansion program, for example, or building female vulnerable people, vocational capacity development center, for example. Institutionalized national technology verification test, one of them. Link industrial cluster with human resources. These are projects from, incurred from their comprehensive policies. Link together their policies. But in the past, we do not care about their overall policies. We just care about specific projects, that's it. It does not link to the overall policies logically, but right now, every donor country is focused on program aid rather than project aid. And the second types to secure aid effectiveness is PPP, public, private partnership, or private public partnership. Right now, there are so many private companies, entrepreneurs, to join ODE programs. For example, Samsung Electronics, POSCO, LG, SK. They want to join ODE programs based on their philanthropic contribution toward developing countries. So right now, COICA introduced PPP 3Ps uh, three years ago. 
Now, it's quite good successful result of it. One of the example is Asian Airlines. Asian Airlines is one of two main airlines in Korea. They want to join k o i k a program, and uh, it was done in Angkor Wat in Cambodia. You know Angkor Wat, right? This is a well-known famous sightseeing place in the world. And Asia Airlines, k o i k a and Cambodia, AP, SARA, authorities gather together, combine together, and then we have this kind of uh, projects. Solar, street light in Angkor Wat. In the past, in the night, there's no light of, uh, in the street. But when Asiana Airlines and the k o i k a gather together, 50% financed by Asian Airlines and 50% by k o i k a And uh, there are so many right now, this kind of uh, street light. What is the impact of these very small projects? First, in the night, there is this kind of light. There are so many vendors to bring their goods to sell their product in the night. Second is the students who want to read books. They came under the discount light to read their books. And because of this light, the crime rate was decreased. Oh, wait. So this is a very small project compared with the general k o i k a projects. However, this is a symbol of private big entrepreneurs to join k o i k a s activity together. Samsung Electronics were now working with k o i k a to Africa to have a bridge programs, to have a education program, illiteracy solving programs in Africa. Right now it's working quite well. And POSCO is right now in green light. Green Revolution in Mongolia, for example. And hopefully, more and more entrepreneurs will join, I hope. Maybe we are afraid that they are driven by their national, their interest. Maybe. But we scrutinize the screening process, whether their motivation was driven by their private company's campaign or not. But if we scrutinize that kind of screening programs, I think that there is no problem. Maybe some problem, but generally speaking, no problem at all. I believe that. But we can utilize money, techniques, the networking by private companies. In case of USAID, they are working with the Coca-Cola projects in Africa. Because in Coca-Cola, they have uh, many networking in remote area too. So by doing, working, or by utilizing this kind of Coca-Cola networking, the project is from you know, main cities to remote area, like this way. So this is one example of USAID, partnership with uh, you know, big entrepreneurs, countries like this way. Koika is one of them. And another good example is South-South Corporation. South means developing countries, generally speaking. North means developed countries, generally speaking. South, South means from developing countries to developing countries. Because developing country knows well the condition of other developing countries. This is a hypothesis of a South, South cooperation. But generally speaking, right now, rather than South, South cooperation, we can use triangular cooperation. South, South, North cooperation, or South, North, North cooperation like this way. Because South South cooperation is very important, but they do not have enough money, enough skills to do that. So North is involved in this process. k o i k a Triangle Cooperation Project in Seed Potato Production in Algeria. Let's give you a good example. Peru is kingdom of the potato. You may know well or not. 
potato. When I visited Peru, I was uh, shocked to, to see that more than 1,000 kinds of potato in the world. All of them was grown in Peru. Peru was experts in potato is related. So, our president visited Peru, and he talked with the Ministry of Agriculture in Peru to provide some experts and many kinds of uh, uh, potato seed to Algeria, which is suffering from the shortage of the food. But the role of COICA, Korea government, is intermediate role. So, Ministry of Agriculture is involved, COICA is involved, Highland Agricultural Research Center in Gangwon Province is also involved there, which is noted for their uh, seed potato number one in Korean research centers, like this way. So, Peru, Algeria, Korea, South, South North Corporation, one of them. This is an example of case for aid effectiveness. So right now, every donor, including COICA, USAID, JICA, and DFID in United Kingdom, every donor is working very hard to secure South, South, North, or South, North, North cooperation together, triangle cooperation, to secure aid effectiveness. So aid effectiveness means partnership, as I told you. Other emerging donors, COICA, last year I visited Brazil and Chile, to have a memorandum of understanding MOU with uh, Chile and uh, Brazil. Why? Brazil was well, noted for their Portuguese-speaking countries. They have very good program in Mozambique. COICA has very good projects in Mozambique. So that Brazil uh, aid agencies, ABC, and COICA gather together and to involve in Mozambique projects together. Chile is noted for their good fishery projects. With this kind of combination, Chile, Coica, and uh, South America projects countries together, we have secured very good training program, which was implemented in Santiago, in capital of the Chile. It's like this way. There are so many ways right now thinking about how to secure aid effectiveness as of today. These are the main issues surrounding uh, ODE programs in the world. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank you very much.